Hi everyone and welcome back to new episode of BWD. Today we're gonna learn how to create a Python app to scrape song lyrics from any target website on the internet. First we'll type the name of the app, my lyrics, and then provide the name of the artist, for example Beatles, and then the title of the song, for example yesterday. If we then press enter, we will get the lyrics. This is equivalent to look for a lyric website on Google, for example AZ Lyrics, and then look for Yesterday by Beatles directly on the website. So this is exactly what we are gonna code today. If you are new to this channel or are back watching this video, do not forget that you can find timestamps in the video description below. And all the code you're gonna see today is available on GitHub, again link in the video description below. And now, without further ado, let's get started. So first off, let's draw a few sketches on the board, to have a high level understanding of how the app is going to work. In the first part, it's going to send a request to the target website, which will send back a response. We're going to do this using the request library. In the second part, we're going to handle the website response. Sometimes we're not gonna be lucky, and we're gonna get an error of some kind. But other times instead, we're gonna get the data, and they are going to be stored in an HTML format. That's why we're gonna use the beautiful soup library, which is specifically designed to scrape this data. And in this way, we'll get the lyrics we are interested in. All right, let's start by creating the structure of our project. First off, we're going to create a directory called my lyrics. And within it, let's create an empty requirements file to specify all the Pinto dependencies. Next, let's create a source directory and within it, another folder called my lyrics where we will put all the Python code. In this way, the Python code is gonna be separated from all the other files in our project. Now, let's write down all the libraries we need. Request for the first part, and beautiful soup for the second one. Then, let's create a Python virtual environment. This is needed because in this way, we're not going to mess up with the existing version of the libraries that we might have installed on our laptop. Great, now let's activate the environment and then let's install all the dependencies. And now let's move to the source directory to finally get started with part number one. All right, first we're going to create a Python file to play around with the request module. This allows us to send a request to any page of a target website identified by an URL. For now, let's create it as a constant and leave it blank. To send a request, we're going to use the get method which requires as an input the URL of the target web page. If the request is successful, we're going to get the content of the web page, otherwise an error of some kind. Now, let's head over to AZ Lyrics website to grab the URL for Yesterday by Beatles. Now, back to the script, let's fill the URL constant with it. And now, let's see if this works in practice. In a new window, let's move to the working directory of our project and activate the virtual environment. Then. Let's run the script and see what comes out. All right, let's see what's inside the R variable. We got response 200, which might be kind of unclear, but if we use the type built-in function, we can see that this is an instance of the class response. This is a native class of the request library, which basically wraps the response from the target web page and offers an API to easily inspect it. For example, to know if we got something meaningful, all we gotta do is simply to check the OK attribute. In this case, it returns true, which means that our request was successful, otherwise it will return false. But how does OK know if the response is successful or not? Under the hood, the OK attribute checks the HTTP status code, which is a number you get every time you send an HTTP request to a target website. In our case, when we printed the R variable, 200 popped out, and that is exactly the HTTP status code. So whenever you get 200, your request has been successful. However, it won't always go this way. So for now, let's move ahead and let's go back to this point later on. Back to the script, let's try with another song. Let's create a request for Baby One More Time by Britney Spears. 
Let me copy the URL I just grabbed from AZ Lyrics and then let's save the response in the R2 variable. In the other window, let's run the script to see what comes out. Let's print the R2 variable. And OK, great, we got 200. So if we check the OK attribute, we should get true then. And here we go. OK, now that we know that our code works well, let's go back to the script and let's refactor it in a more structured way. All right, we're going to create a class. Let's call it AZ Lyrics. And let's provide a little bit of information in the doc string. So every time that we want to use this class, we must provide two inputs, the name of the artist and the title of the song. So let's define them in the constructor or the init method of the class. They're going to be both strings. And then let's save them as attributes. Every time we want to scrape a target song, we need to provide a URL. So let's define the URL public method, which is going to return a string. However, we have to make it dynamic. So if we have a look at the syntax, we can see that at the very end, we have the name of the artist, followed by the title of the song. So here we're going to drop yesterday and Beatles and add square brackets. In this way, we can fill them with the artist and the song name that we are interested in. And finally, let's define the scrape method, which will return the song lyrics. As we had done before, let's define the URL variable and then let's send a request to the target website. So for now, let's just return the response to see if this works or not. So down here, we're going to write a little bit of client code. First, let's create an instance of the AZ lyric class. And specifically, let's try again with yesterday by Beatles. Then let's call the scrape method and save the output in the response variable. Finally, let's inspect it with a few print statements, as we've just done before. In the window below, let's run it to see what comes out. OK, great, we got the same result as before. 200 has status code and OK returns true. Great, it seems like it works. So let's give it a try with another song. Let's try with Britney Spears' Baby one more time and see what comes out. So this time we got 400 has status code and OK tell us that something went wrong. So the question is, what did it go wrong? So some of you might know what the problem is, but let's suppose that we don't have any clue about what 404 actually means. So the first step is to go and check if the URL that we are sending our request to is right or wrong. So back to the script, let's print the URL and see what comes out. And here it is, this is the URL. So let's copy it and open it with Google to see what the problem is. OK, so it seems like we got back to the home page. But why is that? If we go back and have a closer look to the URL, we can notice here in the last part, the title of the song has empty spaces. And the same happens for the name of the artist. Great, so now we have an explanation of why this is not working. We're trying to send a request to a web page that basically doesn't exist. But this is not a surprise because the 404 status code means exactly this, page not found. All right, let's go back to the AZ lyric class and let's try to fix this. So the problem is that we are replacing the square brackets with the wrong values for song and artist. To overcome this, let's define a private method which we're gonna call parse underscore song. And if you don't know what a parser is, don't worry. It's basically a function which transforms an input into an output based on a predefined set of rules. And here we're going to transform the value provided by the user to the value expected by the website syntax. So let's drop all the spaces that we might find and finally let's make it all smaller case. Now the same applies to the artist name. So let's just copy the parser that we have just defined and replace the word song with artist. Finally, let's update the URL method as well. In the window below, let's run it to see what comes out. And here we go, we got 200 as status code. So everything worked as expected. That's why the UK attribute returns true. And as you can see, the URL is the right one. If you play a little bit around with other artists, you're going to discover that what we just coded doesn't always work. And long story short is because there are other rules specific to this website. So a very simple one that we can implement right away and is pretty fundamental is that we need to drop every invalid character. 
that we might find in the song name. So, for example, question or exclamation marks, stuff like that. Let's define the invalid characters constant to store them all. In this way, it is also easy to update it, because every time that we're gonna find a new one, we have just to append it. Let's update the parser now with this additional part where we're going to cycle over the invalid characters, and every time one is found, we have to simply drop it. Alright, we have finally come to the end of this episode. And in the next one, we're gonna start building the second part of the architecture. So, do not forget to subscribe to not miss it out. And with that said, see you in the next one. Ciao!